The current financial crisis due to COVID-19 has left many people unemployed, feeling frustrated, and even helpless in a time of extreme vulnerability. 23ABC is dedicated to helping individuals and businesses to rebound. 23ABC's Daniela Garrido joining us live this morning. She spoke with a local psychiatrist on how you can manage your emotions during this time. Daniela? That's right. Good morning. So during yesterday's press conference, Governor Gavin Newsom announced that phase three would begin at the end of this week, and it was only Friday that phase two began. So we spoke with a local clinical psychologist on what these changes can mean to different people and how they are handling their fear and anxiety during this time. As the state begins to reopen, it may be easy for some to accept a new normal, but for others, the unexpected of exactly what that new normal will look like can feel daunting. Individuals are really concerned about how, what their new life is going to look like, what their new, new normal will, will look like. And um, one, finding the education to say in your area what you can and cannot do and what that looks like um, and being able to have access to go and do those things. I think that's the biggest fear that individuals have at this point. During his therapy sessions with both adult and children patients, Dr. Norman Dwight Jr. says he's noticed different spectrums of fear in going back to normal. He says adults are most concerned they won't get back the lifestyle they once had of social gatherings, a steady income and health security. Whereas before we had maybe had access to a lot of jobs or a lot of variety of different things that you can do. Now with the cutbacks and things like that, you may not have access to those things. On the other hand, kids remain optimistic returning to school will solve their anxiety. Most of them express a lack of freedom, like they feel like they have been stripped of um, um, stripped of their freedom, basically. They've been put on lockdown, like either suspension or, or detention or being grounded. That's kind of how they feel. He says it's a difficult spot for parents who also don't know what life will look like for their kids after this. I'm curious and interested to see how um, the mindset changes of the young ones when they actually get out and they see that you can't sit next to their best friend in school anymore or the playtime is structured very differently. If you or your kids are struggling to manage your thoughts and emotions during this time, finding time to monitor your sleep, eat a balanced diet, engage in healthy interactions, and consistent exercise can help. Think about this on a scale format from 0 to 10, how intense is the emotion? Once we get to 6 and above, um, the thought process seems to take a back seat and emotion takes over. If we can find a way to be able to break that chain and really think about our thoughts as we're having these high emotions and how we're thinking to be able to block some of those emotions from happening, we can have better success to change our behavior. Dr. Dwight says fear and anxiety can start in your thoughts, which will ultimately move toward your emotion and then your behavior. So these are just a couple of tips to help you mentally rebound during this time. But if you or someone you know can offer resources for the rest of the community to rebound during this time, then you can reach our newsroom at turnto23.com. For now, we're live in Bakersfield. I'm Daniela Garrido, 23ABC News, connecting you.